The Bible says that in the last days there will be doctrines of devils. And the Bible also says that we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it is important to note that in the last days we are to be aware what Satan is going to do. And we are not to be ignorant and carried away by his devices. Now the whole world, they are getting carried, carried away. And it is a tragic event on Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma, and then Hurricane Jose following behind it. And a lot of other hurricanes. I think it's going to hit Tampa really soon. But 30,000 people needed a place to stay. And I remember reading one part of the news. There's this one person who was inside a car and then the water was drowning him. And I think he died, but I'm not sure about that. So there were, I think, a few deaths. I think there were a few deaths that resulted as well. But it was such a tragic, horrible event. But in those times, it shows right here that we're getting closer and closer toward the tribulation. You might say, really? Are all these things, that's pretty interesting. Why are so many chaotic things happening in our world, these hurricanes? Well, didn't you know that in the tribulation, you're going to have great events like this? Hurricanes is one of the things. Wind, floods, those are all signs showing that the last days will soon be upon us. Does the Bible say anything about the last days, about the hurricane? Yes, it does, actually. So we'll be talking about these hurricanes right here. So obviously we had Hurricane Harvey that hit toward Texas. And then we had Irma. Was it I or E? I'm not sure. I, okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure. Then Jose was following behind it. And then... Lord knows how many other hurricanes will be coming. But what does the Bible say about hurricanes in the last days? We'll look at Revelation chapter 7 and verse 1. After these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. So this is during the tribulation. And there are four angels about to do something upon this earth in the tribulation. Holding the four, notice, winds of the earth. Why? Because they're going to use this wind to bring some sort of hurricane. That the wind should not blow on the earth. So there's one area that the wind's affecting. Nor on the what? Sea. Nor on any tree. Wow, how about that? So there are these angels that are going to carry this wind. That's going to affect the sea, the waters, and the trees. But look at verse 2. So there were so many victims from the aftermath of the hurricane. So a lot of people are getting fearful. Am I going to get hit by this hurricane? And if there are people, if you are not saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, and then you do get left behind during the tribulation, you might wonder, man, it's going to be fearful. Am I going to lose my salvation as well? Look at verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. So God's going to seal and mark those who are going to be his people. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given him. So then remember, these four angels have the winds that are going to hurt the earth and the sea. But notice, given him to hurt the earth and the sea. See that? So we see right here that the Lord, he's going to bring some sort of hurricane that will be close to the last days. And then verse 3, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the tree. See that? God saying, don't send that hurricane yet, and all these other things that the wind's going to affect. Till we have sealed what? The servants of our God in their foreheads. So remember, they're going to have the seal of the mark of the beast on their forehead. But God's going to make sure. Now, these particular people who get the mark are called the 144,000. And these are actually referring to Jews. So these 144,000 are going to be marked with the stamp of God in their forehead before the hurricane's going to hit. Then there's this other group of people, which are the Gentiles. The Gentiles as well. And they are called the Tribulation Saints. Let's also look at the book of Revelation chapter 12 and Daniel chapter 9. Revelation chapter 12 and Daniel chapter 9. So what else does the Bible say about the floods and the hurricanes that are going to happen in the last days? Well, you got to realize this. It's not only God's judgment upon the tribulation. It's going to be also the devil's wrath. 
Because remember, God says, don't send that hurricane until I mark my servants. So Satan, what he's going to do now is that he's going to attack those servants and send them that flood. Look at Revelation chapter 12 and Daniel chapter 9. Revelation and Daniel really go hand in hand together, you got to understand. Those books of the Bible, they really are parallel, hand in hand together. Look at Revelation chapter 12. We're going to start at verse 1. That way we can see who the context is. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. So in Revelation chapter 12 verse 1, we see right here a woman clothed with the sun, moon, and twelve stars. Who's that? That's actually the nation of Israel in the book of Genesis. Joseph, he dreamed a dream. And Jacob said, referred that as what? His whole family. Who what? Are the twelve tribes of Israel from his twelve sons. He said, will your mother, your father, and then your, the rest of your eleven brothers bow down before you? So that's representing the nation of Israel. So here's the nation of Israel. What's going to happen to them? Well, let's keep reading right here. The devil's going to persecute them. Remember, because God marked his servants, 144,000. So obviously, Satan, he's going to shed his wrath upon them. Look at Revelation chapter 12, and we will read verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. So, who, so that serpent is who? That serpent is Satan in verse 9 verse 9. But let's keep reading at verse 15. And the woman cast out of his mouth, what? Water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So Satan, he's going to send, what? This flood upon the woman and try to attack the, God's people, the nation of Israel, during the last days. And then what God's going to do is that He's going to fight back. Let's keep reading right here. Verse 3 and... The, uh, excuse me. Verse 16. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Let's also look at the book of Daniel, chapter 9. Daniel, chapter 9. Notice what the Bible says right here at Daniel, chapter 9. It goes hand in hand together. There's that flood mentioned, and that was specifically addressed to the nation of Israel. Look at Daniel chapter 9, and we will read verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build what? Jerusalem. So the context is the nation of Israel. And then unto Messiah. Messiah. So that's Jewish again. And let's keep reading right here. Unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall evil even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the Prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Okay, so there's an evil being right here, an evil prince right here. That's going to attack the city of Jerusalem and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a what? Flood. Look at that. Matching Revelation 12. Because that enemy pours out a flood, but it becomes even more clear. It says, and unto the end of the war, what? Desolations are determined. What did Matthew chapter 24 say about the tribulation? The abomination of desolation spoken of by who? Daniel the prophet. See how scripture with scripture ties up? I didn't see that before in the Bible. Who says that book is born, man? The Bible told you about this stuff. <laughs> the Bible told you about this stuff. See, that book is amazing right there. Let's look at also several more passages right here. And we're going to look at the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. That's the tribulation, right? A lot of people know about Matthew 24. That's the famous chapter about the tribulation. Now look what the Bible says about during the tribulation. What's going to happen? It's very interesting. What does the Bible say about the tribulation? Huh. Matthew chapter 24. Maybe we could start at verse 39, shall we? Uh, verse 38 will be better. 
For as in the days that were before, what? The flood. So this is talking about Noah's flood. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Look at verse 39. And you not until flood again came and took them all away. What does that verse say? So shall what? Also the coming of the Son of Man be. Wow. Again. Again. So we see right here that at verses 38 through 39 of the book of Matthew chapter 24, that God says that the coming of the Son of Man, that the last days, that what's going to match up? The coming of the Son of Man is going to match up exactly like the days of Noah. It's very interesting how it likened itself to the days of Noah on about what? The flood. Now, is it going to be a flood that's going to wipe away all the world? No, because God promised Noah, I'm not going to send a flood that will drown out the whole world. But you saw Revelation 7. And not only that, Matthew 24 predicted all these catastrophic events in our world. If you read the book of Revelation when the seals, the vials, and the trumpets are on loose, you got a third of the sea that's affected. That's pretty big. Yeah. So it's going to be bigger than these guys. Quite a terror. Now, We've seen these, these things, you got to understand, are just signs. They're just signs showing that the last days, they're just reflecting on what's going to really happen at the last day. You think these hurricanes were bad and you don't want to go through that catastrophic event? I don't know if you were a victim of this, but I'll tell you one thing, you sure don't want to be a victim of this. Right. You might say, man, I don't want that. You don't have to. You can get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ today, and then you can get raptured, and then you don't have to go through these catastrophic events. You might say, well, how do I get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ? You can do it right now. Jesus Christ is God who died on the cross, raised Himself from the dead, and He did that so His blood can wash away your sin, because your sin sends you to hell. So only what He did on the cross saves you. So all you have to do to get saved is to tell God, is to tell God that you admit that you admit that you've sinned against Him and you're sorry, so you're going to put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross to save you. Amen. That's it. Amen. What are we supposed to do now with these kind of events that happen? My friend, all you can do is make sure that they get saved. I pray that there are good Christian churches that do help those poor victims out there. And through those actions, they open up the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to them. And show forth a good testimony of what a good Christian ought to do. Sometimes testimony can be the greatest thing in your life. But these are the things, these are all just reflections and signs about the real thing that's going to happen. It ain't going to be Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma, Hurricane Jose. It's going to be Hurricane Satan right there. It's going to be bad. Really bad. That's why, why did the, that's why the Bible says that the book of Luke that there will be great wrath upon this people during the tribulation. And that's why Christians do not go through the tribulation, because God calls the tribulation His wrath. There are post-tribulation people that try to make wrath and tribulation divided, but you can't do that when you look at Matthew 24 itself and even Luke 17.